Masking an on one photo raw is incredibly powerful, but there's some tricks that some people never use. Today, we're diving into five quick masking tips you may not have used, but will instantly level up your edits. So let's first start with an easy one, feathering. Feathering is a great way to blend in the edges of your mask into the rest of your photo to make sure things feel nice and natural. So let's go into our local adjustments and let's add in an adjustment into our sky. Now with this local adjustment, we're going to remove some exposure to bring back some detail and color within our sky. The reason being is that if I hold down the J key on my keyboard, I can see there's a lot of blown out area within my sky. So pulling back on the exposure here, maybe adding in a bit of contrast, can help us get a much more detailed and colorful sky. Now the sky looks great, but the edges where the sky meets our foreground look really, really harsh. The reason being is that if we view our mask, the mask is so accurate that we're going to have a really harsh edge there. Well, what we can do to combat that is we're going to go into the masking properties here by clicking on this little box there next to the adjustment. And in the properties dialog, I'm going to go into my masking tab here. I'll go into this little menu, choose refine mask, and I'm going to feather the mask all of the way. By feathering the mask, it's going to soften the edges and blend that foreground area into the background sky area. So if I view my mask now, we have a nice soft edge there, ensuring a much more natural looking adjustment within the background sky. My second tip is to save AI masks inside of presets. So for example, if we work with portraits often, we can save subject masks inside of AI presets and apply those presets into other portrait photos. We can even use them to batch process a group of portraits. So let's go into our local adjustments here and let's create a subject mask. We just add in a little bit of light here. maybe a bit of contrast and it's looking good. We're strictly targeting that subject in our portrait and we've brightened up that specific area. Now let's just maybe get a little bit creative. I'll add a filter. Let's maybe use a curves filter and we'll give it a nice faded matte look. So here's our original and after. Now let's say we want to apply this specific look to other portraits. We can go up into the top menu. We'll go to settings. I'll choose save settings as preset. And let's create a new category here. I'll just name this We'll name this portrait subject presets. And I'll just name this subject brighten. Now in this particular section, I'm going to remove anything in the develop tab because I don't want anything carried over. I didn't create any masks and effects, but I am going to roll open my local adjustments and I'm going to choose apply masks. That's going to carry that subject mask into this new preset so that I can apply it to other portraits and it will target the subjects within those portraits. I'll choose save now. I'll go out to a different portrait here. And let's go into our preset drawer. I'll go to portrait, portrait subject presets. And we have our subject brighten there. I'll click on that. And now if I go into my local adjustments here, in my local adjustment, you can see it's targeted that portrait subject within my photo and it's given it that exact same filter in effects. 
Now keep in mind you can use multiple different adjustments with multiple different masks. You can also add on as many filters as you want, but I did want to mention that because it's a great way to save AI masks into presets and then apply those to other similar types of photos. My next tip is to use your masking bug or your gradient mask tool to create custom vignettes, or you can even use it to create custom spotlighting within your photo. So let's go into our local adjustments and I'm gonna add an adjustment with my gradient option there and I'll just choose add. Now with that gradient tool selected here, we're gonna go up to our top tool modifier bar. We're gonna go into our shape menu and we're gonna choose edges. The reason we want edges selected is because with edges, it's going to apply the adjustment to the outer edges of the mask and protect the center. So we can use the solid line here to modify the size. We can use these little handles here to modify the shape. And we can use this larger handle in the middle to position. And if we need to rotate, we can use this handle here. And so real quick, let me just go into the adjustment and I'll pull back on the exposure quite a bit. Maybe add in some contrast to make sure things aren't flat. And you can see we have this almost spotlight effect on our photo, which is really great, especially for portraiture or you're working with product photography or even automotive captures. But when it comes to creating a custom vignette, what you want to do is you want to modify that feathering. So while the feathering is like this, you can see it's more of a spotlight type effect. But as we pull out the feathering with the perforated edge there, we achieve that nice soft vignette look. If I turn this off and on here, you can see it's, see it's doing a great job of darkening up these corners and really focusing the viewer's attention into the center of the frame, while also adding in a nice bit of mood and drama into the scene. The next tip I wanna show you is how to use the protect section of your masking properties to protect specific tones within your image from adjustments or filters. And I typically use it to protect the shadow tones within my photo. So we'll go into our local adjustments here. I'll use a gradient again. We'll just sort of use the same technique we did earlier. I'll modify the shape. And I'll just focus this on this particular area of the scene. We'll darken things up quite a bit. And then we'll feather it out. So we're really focusing the viewer's attention into that area there with the cityscape in the background. And if we turn this off and on, you can see it's doing a great job of darkening up those corners. But let's say you don't want it to muddy up all of these darker shadow tones. Well, we can go into the masking properties again. This time we're gonna go into blending and there's this protect section here. Remember, if these things are hidden, just click on them and you can roll them open to view them. This will reduce the effect of the adjustment or filter you're using in these particular tones. Now, I typically use it for shadow tones, but if you need to use it on these other tones, feel free. So I'm gonna use shadows and watch as I pull this up and let me move my little um, masking brush icon away. But if I pull up on the shadows here, you can see it does a great job of reducing that adjustment from those darker shadowy tones within my photo. But if we zoom out, we still get this nice vignetting effect and it's still doing the job, but we're now seeing these darker details. So again, go into your masking properties, go into blending and it's this protect section. The last tip I wanted to leave you with is a really easy one but for me, it's essential when it comes to an efficient and speedy workflow, especially when you're working a lot with masks. And that is to use O on your keyboard 
as a keyboard shortcut to view your mask instantly. So you can see here, I've created a subject mask for my animal subject within the photo. So to view that mask, I can just hit O on my keyboard. Just O on your keyboard, and you can instantly view your mask. Now, one thing I wanted to mention when it comes to that is let's say you've created two different adjustments. Whatever adjustment you have selected is what is going to show for that mask. So let's say we have this one opened. If I hit O on my keyboard, that's the one that's going to show. Now, if I click on this one and I hit O, that's the one that's going to show. Or for example, if we go into effects and we add in an adjustment into our subject, let's say we add in dynamic contrast. If we're in this particular section, we're in effects and we have that selected, hit O on the keyboard, that's the one that's going to show. So keep in mind, whatever filter or adjustment you have selected, that's the mask that you're going to see when you hit O on your keyboard. Also, one last thing I wanted to mention is when you are viewing your mask, you can still do masking within the mask view. So if I know that I want to add in a little bit of detail, maybe in these corners or whatever it may be, you can always use the same masking tools you would while you're looking at the photo in the mask view. So O on your keyboard to instantly view your mask. So those are five quick tips that you may not have used when masking in On One Photo Raw. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the lesson, subscribe to our channel for more tips and tricks using On One and On One Photo Raw.